Welcome to Everybody Wants Something, a Degrassi podcast where two black millennials recap every episode of Degrassi from junior high to next class. Because why not? I'm your host, Sonique. And I'm your other host, Lauren. Let's jump in. We're back. We're back, everyone. Welcome back to possibly the most depressing episode of Degrassi High yet. Yes. Yes. Honestly, the most depressing episode, I think, of the entire, like, at least of of what we covered so far in Degrassi is we're going to get more depressing. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. This is probably like the most depressing (laughs) episode. Mm -hmm. So major trigger warning. Like major, we, major, major, major. We already, I, it's good. It's again the description, but letting mm-hmm. you know if you didn't read the description, um, major trigger warning. We're going to be talking about suicide today. So, yes, yeah. Mm. Um, but otherwise, um, we're going to do a true <laughs> Degrassi, um, segue. How's your day, Sonique? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. Um, yesterday I spent my, actually, no, I had a nice weekend. I had a nice weekend. So what I do, um, Saturday I went, um, we were feeling very cooped up cause it's, I mean, it's over a year now of quarantine. We've been very, uh, careful. Um, Mm -hmm. but it was a nice day on Saturday. So we're like, you know, do you feel comfortable about outdoor dining? If we can find, cause it it was a nice day, we can sit outside and if we can find a place that has like good dining, like this very spaced out maybe we can mm-hmm. do it we've done it once before like last summer and i was like let's just, let's try to get outside because we need to yeah. um and we were able to find a restaurant that was like very well done like all the service people had masks and the seats like we were like 10 feet away from people it was like really far yeah. outside and we're like i think this is safe so we did get to go out and eat which is nice and um you know came home and just kind of hung out uh i caught up with a friend um, in New York, have FaceTimed a bit, had a nice little kiki. And then yesterday, um, we Evan went grocery shopping. I cleaned the apartment. We did some meal prep. Um, nice. I hung up some stuff that I've <laughs> – we've been living here for almost a year. There's still stuff we haven't <laughs> hung up. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I hung up like a mirror <laughs> and like setting up our bedroom and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in a good mood. Cool. I'm sitting I'm with my blankie. That. Got my nice little warm blanket here. Wear my Pink yes. Floyd t-shirt. <laughs> I'm still my PJs. It's great. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> How are you? Um, I'm doing well. I also feel like I'm in a good mood. I was feeling very tired today um, after work. Um, just tis the season of hating your job. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, it's that weird, that springtime slump. I feel like Ooh, yeah. you're like you're itching for summer. You're itching for like the fun of summer. And it's just like uh, we're still just like dragging ourselves yeah. through March, which is like the worst month, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Because you're like during the winter, you're like oh winter, oh work, and then when the spring hits, you're like oh spring, and they're like, why the fuck am I at work? This is stupid, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, today was good. My week has been good so far. Um, and yeah, I am in the process. I was just telling Sneak off um, before we started recording. Um, I am in the process of searching and job hunting. So this week is kind of packed full of interviews. Um, job searching for like teaching or ESL type um, jobs in China moves very quickly. They're a dime a dozen Um, and so (laughs) do you like start job searching? It's like, all right, got four interviews lined up this week. It's just, so it kind of, it's good, but then it's like this, like it's, it adds a a jolt to your schedule. That's very busy. Um, Mm -hmm. but it's exciting because I, again, hate my job. So I'm ready to move on up. So, uh, yeah, otherwise doing well, I have a holiday coming up this weekend. So, hopefully going to be um taking a small trip the first trip i've taken anywhere since um coming back to china so mm. question have you been vaccinated no um or are they doing chi- uh, va- vaccinations out there yet or yeah they've been doing it for several months now um china's very very large country <laughs> so oh, population wise 
literally a billion keep, people in the yeah. country. <laughs> yeah, I keep on telling people that. I'm like, yep, they they've been doing it. It's just you know, this is when the this is when the the population like makes its makes its showing. It's like, Shit, yep, yeah. we've got a billion plus people, so <laughs> it's gonna take a while, okay? <laughs> yeah, um, but I just read an article today that. In Shanghai, there they just announced that the uh, foreigners can start making appointments to get a vaccine. Because mm. um, again, your girl is a she's not a national um, citizen of this country, so they could give two fucks about me. Yeah, they're like, um, you could, they're like, you can go back to your ghetto ass country and go get your shots there. Oh wait, maybe <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I know, but it's just like it's just it's just funny because like everyone's been like, oh my gosh, like I'm getting my vaccine, like we can finally return to life, and they're like, oh, so like what's happening over there in China? Have you gotten your vaccine? Like, there's been one person that said it to me in that kind of way, but they're, they're like, see, I, I see, like, I was saying it to you in this. I was like, oh, I'm sure she's been vaccinated. Like, oh yeah, I'm sure. Like you guys, they've got it together. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I know. You, I was I was not referring to you at all. But there's one person that was like, oh yeah, like I got my vaccine, but they've like been out and about like just like living their regular life as if there's not a pandemic and they're like yeah i love the people who are acting like oh god things come back to normal now i'm like i literally saw you going on vacation in florida like a month ago what are you talking it's been normal for you the whole time (laughs) (sighs) um also for anyone that's like oh my gosh i can't wait for this to be over go ahead and go over to hbo or youtube and go watch john oliver the next pandemic his little spiel on it it's never going to be over Oh yeah, Ma'am, no, this or is, sir, this is, or this non-binary. Is, yeah, no, this is just going to be like um, it's going to be like the flu. Like it's just we COVID yeah, just gonna is here to stay. One. If anything, we're just going to like hopefully we learn from this time how to yeah. handle it. But who the fuck knows, honestly. <laughs> I know. But I'm just I'm um, just itching to get vaccinated at this point. Girl, yes. Um, <sighs> I'm itching to get vaccinated so I can, like, maybe leave the country. That's basically what it is right now. It's, like, mm-hmm. um, waiting, like, once countries globally start, like, just, like, rolling out vaccines to, like, you know, all the population, then international travel can finally kind of, they can make regulations and kind of get that coordinated um, cause yeah, I'm hoping maybe I can get back to the States like by next summer, like summer 2022, um, mm-hmm. and be able to like easily come back to China. That's the biggest thing is like, once you leave, how to get well, back. Madam, I'm getting married next year. So I know I need you to figure <laughs> yourself out because October, 2022, I need you okay. to be able to come October, back to 2022. I, that's, that's like a good, I'm glad that you're like, you're like, okay, when can Lauren get back? That's when we need to have our wedding. But that's actually a really good time. It should be fine. Um, yeah. But cause also, um, the Beijing, the Winter Olympics, the next Winter Olympics is happening in Beijing. Um, oh, and so, okay. uh, that's still happening. And so the country is going to have to open back up cause they obviously need international athletes and then also like the amount of people that are wanting to travel and watch it as well yeah so that's it's gonna have to open up open back up by you know the beginning of 2022 so yeah um i mean i'm feeling optimistic um even though i'm not vaccinated yet i'm hoping they're saying that in chicago uh the next phase that would allow me to get vaccinated is like may so i'm hoping that like i'm able to get a, a vaccine appointment like quick 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 because my goal is to be vaccinated fully vaccinated by my birthday i would yeah. like to be able to celebrate my birthday this year like outside of my house <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> I don't exactly. want two quarantine birthdays, so we'll see. Exactly. Yes, I'm saying yeah. I'm doing this for purely selfish reasons, by the way. Yeah, I mean, what what else is there to do it for? You know. I mean, I've been living with myself for the past year, so I've, if anything, I've become more selfish. <laughs> if any, <laughs> can can I can I just go on a slight uh, tangent? Because mm-hmm. uh, I feel like I'm I'm among friends here. Um, <laughs> of course, it's family. You know, thank you friends and family weekend um or friends and family sale that's what i'm talking about uh so the the people out here 
that are like, you know, I know that 2020 was like a lot for many people, but like, I don't know. 2020 was like actually a really good year for me. Like I had a lot of personal growth. I made like, I like made big changes in my life financially and you know, like you, whenever, and then they'll like turn it into a thing of like, you know, whenever troubling adversity comes into your life, this is how you can change it into a good. And it's like, shut the fuck up, man. Yeah. Shut it's like, up. while I can see like that being true, maybe keep that to yourself. Yeah. Read the room. Read the room. You know, like it's been rough for a lot of people. Maybe like. Is and odds are you're probably talking to someone that knows that had someone that they love that died of COVID. Like, yeah. you know. Strong chances. Like the, I mean, yeah. over 500,000 Americans died. So it's like, good chance, you know, they know someone who <laughs> who died. And you'd be like, I don't know. Like, I just like, um, I learned how to make sourdough. And I'm realizing, like, I can be really self-sufficient during a, you know. Yeah. And I quit <laughs> my job and I became my own boss. You know? Like. <laughs> my own girl boss, if you will. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, gosh. Also, I know we've talked about our favorite former high school roommate that was a girl boss, is a girl boss. One of the people that I also follow became part of her team and is now also a girl boss, and I can't stand it. Oh, no. A boss babe. Boss babe. I just love this... <laughs> I just love this um, energy drink and moisturizer and um, collagen powder. It works great for me. Um, do you want to? <laughs> like, I just can't. I can't. I can't. Hey, hon. But... <laughs> hey, hon. Yeah. What's new with you? Um, <laughs> all right. Are you ready to get into the 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 depths of um, of despair. sadness, despair? Yes. Um, and also, like, random acts of, like, jokes and funniness in this Degrassi episode. Also kind of racist. Uh, there's oh, always, <laughs> always. Just a tinge of racism. Yes, I am. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can't see this, but Sneak just um, put her arms out and her head back as if she was um, accepting the spirit of Christ into her soul. <laughs> Or aren't we, um, aren't we all? Yesterday was Palm Sunday, ma'am. So ooh, I forgot about that. Christ wow. is risen, or almost risen. He's not not even close, girl. It hasn't even, even been Good Friday. Hasn't even, mm. girl. You don't see. You don't even know. You went to Christian college. How you gonna let me? Know? I know. I don't let me know. <laughs> Listen, I am a heathen now. I should really. Oh. I should really get back on track. Says, I guess. Says yeah. I think like I don't know. I think on Sunday, Easter Sunday, I'm gonna like. I think I'm going to try to, like, be Christian. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I that's I'm all gonna... that that's all that we really ask for, is yeah. for, for you to try. I'm going to wear a high neck sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Very biblical. <laughs> Matthew 5, verse 6 through 8. Women shall not show any skin, wear high neck, and um, uh, preferably a um dugger perm with straight bangs okay it took me too long to realize that you were joking i thought that was actually i was like oh it's like matthew she no <laughs> see that's how they get you they're like this is what the bible says bitch there ain't nothing about how women should dress in the fucking bible it's the patriarchal white supremacist fucking religious bullshit don't let me get on a rant. Okay, we're talking about suicide and depression. Let me let me not even go down. Let me not yeah, even go yeah, down. I think that we, can, we only handle so many, so much, so many sad things. So let's Ooh, choose one. Let's child. pick one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. We'll be back after a quick break. Support for this podcast comes from Invent Together. According to studies, less than thirteen percent of all inventors who hold a U.S. patent are women. Black and Hispanic college graduates patent at half the rate of their white counterparts. But we can fix that by increasing participation in innovation and patenting by underrepresented groups. It would quadruple the number of American inventors and increase annual GDP by almost $1 trillion. Invent Together is a coalition of organizations, companies, universities, and concerned citizens committed to ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to invent and patent. 
Because the more diverse the American patent system gets, the stronger and more successful our nation will become. What can you do to help diverse inventors patent and unleash economic opportunity? Find out at inventtogether.org. Learn more and take action today. This episode is brought to you by HP Instant Ink. No one is reading your mind, but HP Instant Ink knows when your printer is running low and sends you new cartridges, so you never have to think about ink. Save up to 50%. You'll pay less than $5 a month for ink and never run out again. Find out if your printer is eligible and enroll today at hpinstantink.com. Conditions apply. For details, visit hp.com slash Spotify. This episode is brought to you by Madewell. Ready to step up your denim game? The experts at Madewell use premium fabric and the latest denim technology to make super comfy, never want to take them off jeans in fits and styles for everyone. The kind of jeans you'll reach for again and again. Get $20 off your online jeans purchase by using code SPOTIFY20 at madewell.com. Terms apply. Please see madewell.com slash promos for full offer details. All right, so this week we are recapping Showtime part one and two. Um, So we're going to start with part one. I'm not exactly, I did not write down when part one ends. Because it's all just one episode. Yeah, I thought it was going to break too. It didn't. But according to Wikipedia, they aired on different days. Yeah, but I have no idea when the one ended and one began. It just felt like it was one continuous episode for me. Okay, and that's the way it was It was playing. So we're just going to yeah. read both synopses back to back. All right, so Showtime Part 1 was originally aired January 7th, 1991, 1991. And Part 2 was aired a week later on the 14th of 1991. Synopsis. The whole school is thrown into turmoil when a student commits suicide at school, especially Caitlin, since the student is her ex-boyfriend, Claude. In part Mm -hmm. two, life begins to go on at Degrassi, but should they go through with talent night? Meanwhile, Caitlin begins to have nightmares about Claude's suicide. I think I read that with too much pep. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, Claude. Um, Sorry. Okay. Serious. Okay. So we, because it's a very special episode, a very like dark topic, we get a Mm -hmm. PSA at the beginning with Caitlin and Joey, aka Stacy Mistison and Pat, um, Pat, you know, I say Mastriani. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, And they're basically kind of giving you a heads up that... Today's episode is involving suicide and depression. Um, what did you think of this PSA at the beginning? Um, so I thought, so I'm looking at my notes. I thought it was okay until they were like, most cases of attempted suicides, people don't actually want to die. And I was like, yeah. that's not true. Like, <laughs> I, I wrote, is this true? And I'm like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's not true. Um, yeah. Can it be true? Yes. Yes. Um, people can, you know, a suicide attempt can be a, call, a cry for help. It can be something you think you want to do and then realize you don't actually want to do it. Plenty of people, you know, want to, you know, attempt suicide and then choose not to. But I feel like that was a pretty bold claim to say people, yes. in most cases of attempt suicide, <clears throat> people don't actually want to die. I'm like, mm. though, I guess, I guess if they're saying, I think it's the difference between attempted and completed. Because obviously, if it's a completed suicide, we can't know what they really wanted, right? But an attempted yeah. suicide implies that the person didn't die. But I'm just like, I don't know. It just it felt a, like a dubious claim. Yeah, it was it was a very blanket statement that I'm like, yeah. okay, I think it, there's a little bit more gray area here. Yeah, it definitely time stamped itself where it's like, hey, <laughs> this is how it is. Either black or white. It's either this or that. So yeah, and it's I feel like the, it, the unfortunate um, implication is like almost dismissive, and I don't think that's what they mm-hmm. were trying to do. But it's like, yeah, you're focusing on the wrong thing, is what I'm saying. Like the issue yeah. is more that this person 
has gotten to such a point that they feel like the best option is to no longer exist versus whether or not they actually want to not. It's just like, I feel like that's not really the point. It's the former, not the latter. But eh, yes. whatever. I'm not a mental health professional either, so I'm speaking just yeah. from. Exactly. You know. But I, I agree. It was definitely, they were, I think they were trying to be like, they they were kind of projecting the message like, yes, like, suicide is not the answer. Right. And, but then they kind of were leaning towards of like, like, and then like people that are in, are on this, uh, in this mindset, like, they don't really want to die. And it's like, yeah, but like, <laughs> like, it's, it's. It's somewhat dis- yeah dismissive and not really validating. Well, especially like, when you're talking about like, I mean, I don't want to get graphic, but if someone shoots themselves, I think they want it to die. Like yeah. it's like it's it's yeah. not like a maybe you might survive Attempted like, overdose. Like, yeah, or um, like you're doing it in a public way that where like you're like saying you're telling everyone you're gonna do. Like, you know, it's like I don't know. I would say Claude wanted to die. Like <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like so yeah i yeah mm. yeah it was it, again it was like it was a night i felt it was like a 90s attempt but like watching it now it's like um yeah i don't know if that's but i mean you know they were they were doing something yeah <laughs> they tried they they tried it um so we get our cold open and claude is reviewing notes um i think it's kind of the time before the talent show auditions and um he's very he's obviously taking this very seriously like he's like i'm an artist these fuckers don't get it but mm-hmm. i'm got to, like they're gonna they're gonna hear this art um we get <laughs> caitlin is in her full aerobic 80s 90s aerobic um yes jane fonda like workout video outfit <laughs> <laughs> she's got a leotard um over is she wearing leggings underneath yeah she's like leggings like leg warmer she's got like the full fit yes. and she has like one of those braided like sweat head headbands yeah i was like it was a little oh. bang <laughs> yes yes they're like listen i'm gonna i'm gonna have this hair out like you're gonna see it yes um and i think this is when claude kind of walks up to her mm-hmm. and uh says what if we tried again and um, that's when we kind of, and then Caitlin kind of dismisses it. But at one point we find out that it's been a year timeline wise since they broke up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, damn, that's, yeah. that's not good. It's not, he's not the, over it. He's not in the quote of it all. I feel like we're going to get into it more. It is dark, not just because of the suicide, but also like, I feel like the implication is that Claude has been like, kind of harassing Obsessive. Caitlin for like a year mm-hmm. and they kind of touch on it but I think it's like this feels abusive because it feels yes it feels abusive I don't know if that's what Degrassi was trying to do I I I don't know I feel like they were they were <laughs> as they do they were trying a lot of different things in, <laughs> in this episode that luckily they had hours so they had a little bit more time to like play this out um but yeah, it, there's just a lot. Of, there's a lot of kind of like things that are just kind of brushed aside. Where it's like, wait, what? Like, like this, like this. Right. Uh, it's not. It's a lot of the things that he specifically did and is doing towards Caitlyn is highly, highly problematic. Yeah, never okay. And I feel like they didn't fully like point the finger, being like, this is not okay this is terrible and you can't do this to someone exactly and it's not just like i feel like this is what happens and it's where degrassi fails itself with this episode is what happens when you decide to do like the suicide um topic with a character we haven't really seen in a long time so it's like it's a lot of people explaining things about him that i'm like wait 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 wait. we didn't rewind rewind we don't know this and it's like so it, it it in a in a fucked up way, and I'm sorry to say it. It takes away a lot of the sympathy because it's like, Girl, tell it, me which, why. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like I'm not saying like, oh yeah, fuck him, he killed himself. Like, no, like no, I I empathize with the fact that like this is clearly a troubled young man. But there's a lot of stuff that happens, and I'm like, are like this is like I, I, almost in a weird way, the suicide almost feels secondary to me than like the other behaviors, and I'm like, this is like really like 
scary what he's doing to other people that i'm like what the f-? yeah we'll get into it we'll get into i know it. <laughs> i just want to say it. i didn't write this down but i want to say it only Degrassi would somehow learn to villainize the student <laughs> that commits like complete suicide. They made right. him into a fucking villain. We had yeah, and, and like never really. <laughs> the only person that had sympathy was for that fucking girl Joanne, who we also didn't know who the fuck she was. I didn't know who she, she was. Weird. I was like, like, what's, what's her problem? <laughs> like, like, yeah, it's like uh, it gets better. Like, I mean, Degrassi um, does do a suicide um, episode mm-hmm. later, later with a character that I think is very well done it's done mm-hmm. so well because we get to learn who this person is we see their struggles we see the the art the entire like arch mm-hmm. um character arch that happens with the carrier arc not arch arc that happens with this person versus this which is like last time we saw claude he ditched caitlin she slapped him one time but then like he just kind of is like around but we don't know anything about him and then like exactly. everything we hear about him is really toxic actually and i know I die. god <laughs> God, and both was, okay, just to reiterate, both things, two things can be true. I can, I'm sad that like this person would kill themselves, but also, no one is talking about this behavior that is borderline emotionally abusive and manipulative exactly. to people. Okay, we'll keep going. Sorry, <laughs> but I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad we got into that. I'm glad we're on the same page. <laughs> yes. I mean, of course. We who? Why would we not be? But still, <laughs> what if this was like this was? I'm like actually like. I don't know. Like, what if I was somehow, like this is the disagreement that just broke right. everything off. Um, so after the um, the theme song, we get into our first scene, which is a kind of montage and little snippets of the auditions that um, I thought were after school, but I think they might be during school. It's kind mm-hmm. of vague, the timeline of the school day. Yeah. Um, the first scene we see of the auditions the first people performing are Arthur and his female doppelganger, um, Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy. Okay, but <laughs> I forgot that Arthur and Dorothy were supposed to be cousins in this. So I was like, why, why is he dancing with Dorothy? Like, I, I, know. I don't know how I did because they literally look the same. But for some reason, I was like, oh, he, why is he dancing with that weird girl? It's like Tessa's friend. It was confusing. And I was like, oh, yeah, they're cousins, I guess. <laughs> yes. And, um so they're tap dancing which i'm like oh look at them they they can tapity dance um we see that joey and caitlin say hi and um i think i i want to say that joey calls her an ice queen again or refers to her as ice queen yes he does Uh, he calls her Mm -hmm. ice maiden which i was like (laughs) joey you're still mad (laughs) like what i know jeez like hop Um, off Oh my gosh, I just had a realization. Mm-hmm. Well, like, in, like, you know, reading into the episode. Yes. Do you think that they were playing Joey and Claude off each other? Being, like, seeing how differently they handled, like, the breakup? Or, like, a breakup with Caitlyn? Hmm. That's a... Maybe not on purpose, but, like... An astute observation. What, like, uh... Yeah. Like one's a healthy way to deal with a breakup and one's not, or what? Yeah, or maybe not even like the comparison of like Joey and Claude, but like maybe the comparison of like like this is what an unhealthy relationship is, and like look at Joey and Caitlin, like they're really like they're in true, they're really in love, like they really like uh, they're a match made in heaven, kind of I, like which I, I thought hope, was kind of weird. I hope not because it's kind of fucked up because it's almost like oh, in order for Joey and Caitlin Endgame to happen, Claude has to die. <laughs> Girl. It's like, oh no. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I was like, so is this like their like the the, the beginning of like their like true like romantic love story? It is though. It is. <laughs> Shit, I didn't even think about that, but you're right. Fuck because you know, man. because I'm pretty sure that's like because like up until this point, Caitlin and Joey have still had this tension, but like they start to kind of come together at the end of this episode. You're right. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, I that's know. gross. I don't like that. And and like and like yes that can happen in real life, but like did you need to like, <laughs> Again, cuz it's a storyline. It's like this is like the the kind of like big moment for them where it's like, oh, this is like when it fucking starts. And I'm like, wow, Degrassi. Wow, Degrassi. Wow. That's that's trifling. 
<laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even really th- i didn't realize that but you're i think you're totally right because it is it's like yeah they do bond over his dad yeah and like and like joey's there for her and like she's like oh, i'm cured my <laughs> nightmares are gone it's like okay <laughs> Right. Oh shit! Maybe well, try also, some therapy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what's also funny, which is like a little bit it's off topic, not from that, but I think you're totally right. Um, I don't think high schools really like had that ever had that many people auditioning for a talent show, unless you go to like a full performing no. arts school. Like, I mean, because like even the audition for talent show usually was just more just to show the talent, so we know what you're going to be doing, as opposed to like mm. we're going to like say no to you if you're not talented enough but i feel like when we had talent shows at our school the few we did there weren't that many acts it was like no because no one went to them no one went to them no one cared i went to one talent show and it was okay (laughs) i mean like that's exactly what's gonna happen like it's never yeah it was cute it was like oh okay this is cute like it wasn't like whoa like the finest of the high school talents coming together like you know yeah and based off these auditions it doesn't seem like it's going to be very entertaining i know this (laughs) school it seems like it's full of talentless hacks (laughs) (laughs) i mean like get the fuck out of here man so we get arthur and dorothy tap dancing uh so after joey says hi to caitlin snake is painting joey on his stomach because they're gonna have like faces like on their stomach like with like mustaches and everything um and we then later realize that they're going to be wearing, like, uh, Giant sombreros. The... Yeah. Yeah. It's like, look. We're... He's racist. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> it's not great at all. It's like, oh. At first, because you don't really realize what their cost, or, like, what their thing is supposed to be until they put the giant sombreros, like, and then they're wearing, like, um, those, like, blankets. That yeah, are, like, like, like the poncho used. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, no. Oh, yeah, no. like the joke is that like we're Mexicans while we're singing our like everybody wants our something one song. song. Yeah, it was weird. Um, and also definitely it dates. It definitely did dates the episode. This episode is very nineties because of that too. Oh like God, this is yes. not funny. Um, no. Um, then we get uh, the dancing jockettes, which are Luke, Simon, and the the one guy that Lucy had a crush on that turned into be like a super misogynist. Oh, yeah. Interesting, because now he's in drag. Listen. Listen, okay? This also time stands in the 90s, because it's like, oh, our super masculine guys are going to dress up as girls. It's going to be comedy. But how dare one of the other people dress up as in any feminine way? Because that's just wrong. Well, it's also funny, because I feel like, um, I remember boys in school, like, we'd have, like, wacky tacky day, like, dressing up like girls and stuff and doing it. And I always feel like, secretly, it's like, I think you just want to dress like a girl. Like, I think you kind of like it. Like, I... And it, it was just fine, which is fine. But I feel like the joke exactly. is I was like, uh uh-huh, look, I'm dressed like a girl. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like you wear in that miniskirt. I think you like it. I think you should I know, try like, it. It's, it's fitting you in all the right places. And I think yeah, you know it. That thing is banging. <laughs> like, maybe you should. <laughs> maybe you should dress like a girl. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that. <laughs> um, and we see that the two people kind of organizing everything, which I was surprised it wasn't Nancy. Um, she's probably like running the the backstage crew. Um, yeah, she's got her headset the, on. The techies, yes, yeah. yes. She's um, getting the lighting cues and everything. Yeah. Um. So Lucy and uh, Bronco are still together. They're kind of heading everything's up, and that's when we see Claude gets up to the stage, and uh, he's written a personal, um, original piece. And I already knew. I was like, oh no. Any high schooler that's like, I'm going to read an original piece, it's never going to end well. No, it's not. And, and this, the, this went even darker than I thought it was going to be. Because the poem was just like, fall, death, I am dead, I want to be. <laughs> Degrassi really like drove the point home like, this is a cry for help. Because he's like, a casket is warm, I like it, I hope to be in one one day soon, <laughs> like, question mark. It's very like okay like yeah okay, like, like if you were like trouble what is, get it what is a poem that romanticizes death it's like this like this is <laughs> there's no like interpretation it's like this is what it is 
<laughs> but oh, at the gosh. same time, it's so accurate for like teenage angst. And it's why it's like oh, yes. Degrassi is trying to be like, this is a cry for help. But also this is early 90s. Like Gen X was angsty as fuck. There were plenty of teens yeah. who wrote poetry like this and didn't uh, kill themselves. And that's a kind of like the tricky thing because it's like, no, I think we definitely should try to like be aware of those cries for help. But also – I wrote fucking sad ass like poetry yeah. all the time exactly. too. And it like I didn't do that. But you know, I was teen, yeah. You know? So as we literally talked about last time, how we like love to find those depressing song just to feel sad about something potentially happening in our future that's depressing. Yes. Like I think that's like it's <laughs> it's that's part of the teenage experience, but but also yeah. check on check in on your friends, obviously. Exactly. And I think that's the kind of thing like this is the like so everybody goes hearing this and just being like, Ugh, this is uncomfortable. Like here goes Claude again. The guy Brock that goes like, black and Brock an goes like this is a drag. He's like, This is you're really <laughs> like, bringing down the mood. Debbie Downer, get him off stage. Like <laughs> Um, and so Bronco's like, hey, I just don't think that this is going to be right for the show. Like, we're kind of looking for more of, like, a upbeat, funny vibe. And that's when Claude goes, I do my monologue or nothing. And I was like, oh, he is, he is passionate. He is passionate. And then he goes, he as he's storming out of the theater, he's like, you're all a bunch of sheep. And I was like, <laughs> damn. He's like, you're you all care. a bunch of Nobody sheep. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. He's like, you, but you'll all see. Which is where it's like, where okay. the Claude toxicity begins. Well, mm-hmm. it doesn't begin there, but like, it's where it starts going. Because it's like, it, I end up agreeing. You know what? Let's just keep going. I'll talk about it later. Because if I keep interrupting, okay. we're going to be on this forever. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. All, all right. So things. let's. Okay, let's we'll get we'll kind of get to like maybe heart and we'll kind of go into detail about things. Well, I think we also meet Jo because Joanne pops yes. in too in, in that scene. She's like, she's like, he's like my parents. His parents are getting divorced. Like, but like we again, we didn't know even know who Joanne is. Like, who the hell is this girl? She loves <laughs> exactly. George. Yeah, I think it's kind of alluding to the thing of like, like so it's it's always that he's. I said I wrote friend we've never seen before chases after him, <laughs> and then she goes. We've never seen you anymore. And it's like, who's we? Like, like who's we've out with never him? seen you. <laughs> Who are you? Exactly. <laughs> and so I think it's kind of just alluding to the fact it's like, oh, like, he's he's an outsider, even if it's like, even if it's like outsider of the cast, like, he's also kind of being distant to his actual friends. But mm-hmm. obviously, in the context of Degrassi, he's like already an outsider. Mm-hmm. Um, so we hear that, yes, Claude's parents are getting divorced. And um, and then he tells Joanne, you know, you don't know what it's like to be me. Um, and just kind of storms off. And again, it's just she's, again, in this moment kind of offering, like, reaching out. Like, hey, like, we want, you know, we're here for you. Kind of, like, offering a hand to kind of just, like, talk or whatever. And he's mm-hmm. just refusing. Yeah. Um, we see a quick thing of Joey and Snake performing their like, racist. Um, everybody wants something rendition. Next scene. The <laughs> next day at school. <laughs> Um, we see that Caitlin, or we hear that Caitlin has moved back home with her parents, um, now that they're staying together. Mm-hmm. Um, and we see that clothes by her locker and it's super creepy, like lurking. The epitome of lurking is this scene. I really was under, I thought that like, um, if I didn't know what was going to happen, it, I, I thought it was going to be like a murder suicide. Girl. Because of the, that, how like, scary they made him. And I, again, I think Degrassi is trying to go for like he's a tragic figure, but they actually made him like terrifying. I was scared. Yeah. I was like, is he going to like do something to her? Like what? Yeah. Yeah. Very scary. Mm-hmm. Um, so we see that he offers her a white rose, which I'm like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and Caitlin says, you know, we're not together anymore. Stop bothering me. And this is when he says, don't worry, I won't anymore. I just came to say goodbye. And then he kind of like walks away. But he's very like, um, what's that? This is, I think, possibly the last talk. This is the last verbal scene we hear from him mm-hmm. um, or a line from him. Um, and uh, he kind of is, he's upbeat, I would say, this day. 
Like, mm-hmm. obviously, the day before, he's, you know, very distraught at the audition. But it kind of seems like he's smiling. He's, and it seems, he appears he's in a good mood. Is that something where it's like, I know there's like different signs of like someone that's contemplating suicide. Mm-hmm. There's like, you know, the saying of goodbye, the kind of wrapping up of things and giving, giving away of personal away. possessions, mm-hmm. um, you know, verbally planning and talking about suicide, you know, is is that a thing? Or am I thinking of like when someone has cancer, when they suddenly feel better and then they die later? <laughs> is <laughs> is this something? Is this also I'm like sorry. a possible? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I laughed. It just was like, I didn't think <laughs> the other thing you thought it was would be that. So it just was took me by surprise. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm confusing the two or if this is actual like a pot, like a, like when someone's like in a very kind of depressive, like distraught mood and then all of a sudden they're kind of on an upswing but then they're also doing the kind of things of like saying goodbye giving away possessions is that a thing or am i making that up i don't know it could be i I genuinely don't know it might be the cancer and maybe um (laughs) maybe it is with certain for some people like it's maybe like that feeling of like i've decided what i'm gonna do and i'm like content with that yeah and i could see where that could be the reality for some people but other people maybe not so i don't know yeah Mm. I think, um, I think, but I think it tracks with Claude and like kind of like, I hate to say this because like, we're talking, we're talking about fictional characters, which doesn't take right. away the criticism we're making. But like, just to reiterate, I'm talking about this fictional person and not like people who actually exist and, mm-hmm. and contemplate suicide. But I feel like the, his, the way he's acting almost tracks with like, kind of like the theatrics of yes. what he chose to do. It's not just that like, I am depressed and i i chose to you know to take my own life because i could not um deal with what was happening in my own Mm -hmm. life but it also feels very like fare thee well kind of like he's doing this broad sweeping so it's like the the mood of like being like here's a rose don't worry about me like it's very like yeah uh, theatrical theatrical, and i think it's it's it but it makes sense for who he is it's like yeah i could totally yeah it fits his character in the show it fits that he would his yeah. behavior would be this kind of like jovial thing. And I feel like to kind of drive home. Because let's be real here. Like we get into it later. But what Claude did was kind of indicative. Not that he killed himself. But like it's very clear. It's he wanted to do harm yes. to people in doing it as well. And it's, must, it's very 13 reasons why. It's very like, dude, come exactly. on. It's very exactly. 13 reasons That's why. Exactly what I was thinking. It makes it hard to like root for him Talk in a way. Here. Because it's like, yeah, or like you don't, you, you're very confused in your feelings about someone that's truly suffering. Like, and it, you shouldn't, when, <laughs> I don't know, I but feel then, like that's But, but the then next. again, I think it also reflects the reality of like when this does happen, the the range of emotions people feel. Yeah. So, that's very true. Yeah. I think it's, it's effective in that. If that's what they're trying to do, then I think that it works. And I guess it makes for good TV. So, yeah. Um, so after he does this and walks away, Caitlin and Maya kind of look at each other and laugh and like, oh, what a loser kind of thing. But as a viewer, you're like, oh, shit. Uh. Right. <laughs> so we get um, a cut to everyone's in class. There's science class. Um, and we see that Joey's asking the old Irish man, I believe, or possibly Scottish uh, teacher for help. Um, and he's like, yeah, sure. No problem. Um, and then we see... That Claude is still outside at his locker. And um, what's the name of Caitlin, Kathleen's ex-boyfriend that was Scott. abusive? Scott. Apparently Scott and Claude are like besties, which I'm like, that's not a thing. Yeah, like, I feel like they, you know, but you know Degrassi, they have like a limited number of talking roles of people <laughs> they can pay. So they're like, Scott, get in here. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, you know, he's basically, like, you know, like, hey, you're going to be late for class, Claude. And Claude's like... I'm not going to any more classes. And it's like, okay. Like, I think Scott was like, all right, cool. Like, But then you're like, oh, shit. And he's kind yeah, of like, obviously it's saying, definitely in the way of Degrassi trying to like, he's telling, like, I, they, I think what they fail is that they're trying to do the thing where like, he's kind of leaving us like clues. Out, yeah. But like, but not really, because if I was a high school student, like, hey, like you classes this way. And they're like, I'm not going to class. I'd be like, all right. Like he's she's ditching. Like, I I, I, like I'm sorry, six year old me is not thinking like, oh, Claude is going no. to hurt himself. I'm thinking like he's like, oh, I'm not going to class no more. I'm like, okay, like you gonna go smoke some weed in the bathroom? I don't know. And I, I 
go to class. Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. And I hate that they're trying to imply like all of these people were kind of sent these messages from Claude and they didn't respond. I'm like, but that's not really like yeah. a message I think most people would pick up on. Like Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Degrassi. Um, so he kneels down his locker and he pulls something out of his locker and we realize that it's a gun that's wrapped in a cloth um, from his bag. And you're like, oh, shit. And then he walks away. Did you um, notice? Down the hallway. Did you notice he had a picture of Kate Caitlin in his locker? <gasps> I did not. Yeah, oh, he shit. still has one in there. And because like, he leaves the locker door open, and there's like a picture of Caitlin in there still, after over a year. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. All right. Yeah. So, um, we. <clears throat> We cut to the English literature class, and that's when we see that Snake asks to use the bathroom. Sorry, the washroom, because it's Canada. Yes. The boys' washroom. And um, it's the kind of the kind of back and forth kind of scenes of, like, kind of jumping around is very, um, I don't know. Maybe it was just because I knew, like, it was the episode, but I think it's, like, it's very much, like, you're just kind of, like, wondering, like, when is the, when is the the shoe gonna drop like when is the shit gonna go down because it's Mm -hmm. like everyone appears to be very happy but you as a viewer know like what's about to happen and it's very right yeah so we go to the bathroom and um this is the scene that snake goes to the bathroom and goes through the process of finding claude um in the bathroom stall Mm -hmm. so we Which was see that pretty snakes- graphic too. I didn't expect them to show like the blood, his legs, the blood. Mm-hmm. Um, so we see that yeah, Snake walks in. He sees, um, and we can see like it's clothes, shoes, like it's his buckle, um, pointed toe boots, um, and there's blood underneath the stall. And the kind of uh, realization that Snake has in the way it's acted out, I thought was done well. Mm-hmm. He's re- um, yeah. He he does really well in this episode. Yeah, because there's like the time of like he's like he's like kind of, he sees things, but it's taking him time to like fully comprehend like what's in front of him. Uh huh. Um, which I thought like because I feel like usually in the kind of dramatic way, it's like it's like you know they walk into the bathroom, they see the legs, and they open the door, and they're like, <gasps> and then you know then they like faint or something, or they run out screaming. And mm-hmm. I thought that his portrayal is, I think very i don't know like obviously everyone reacts to things completely differently Mm -hmm. but i think the reality of seeing something so shocking like your your brain does your brain does not fully it doesn't click immediately you know like Mm -hmm. that's your natural reaction to like anything tragic or thing like that shocking you know yeah I think I think you're totally right. The way that he reacts is very, I think, realistic. Too, mm-hmm. I think that the attitude of kind of just like, you know, sh- shock and then like kind of just shaken. He's shaken. He's very mm-hmm. shaken up. Um, okay, sorry, but am I to believe that no one heard him shoot himself in the bathroom? Listen, <laughs> listen. Okay, <laughs> Our, so many things. Gun. He had a gun. <laughs> Like, and I would like, I mean, that was kind of a question. I don't have, by the way, I don't have any YouTube comments for today. Cause like, they're all just kind of like sad, saying the same stuff we'd say and just being like, man, damn, this is sad. Like there's nothing, there's nothing funny and just more down. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people are talking about that, but like, what, what about the gunshot? Like where, why was this a hole in the, in the, in the storyline? Like. Cause I feel like they needed to show him like do- dying in a very dramatic way, which I feel like that is a very, um, I mean, death of any kind is dramatic, but I mean, like, kind of just a very big, like, you know, shocking yeah. way, I guess. But then I didn't think they felt they thought about the logistics of like <clears throat> how the school's yeah. not that big that someone shot themselves in the bathroom or ch- or fired off a gun in the school. Someone yeah. would hear it. Yeah. Even with with the bell, like some theories are like, oh, is that the same time as bell? I was like, no, no, the school bell is never that loud. Like a gunshot is no. like, I, you know, people um, 
underestimate how loud shooting is. It's very – movies don't properly depict it because people, like, will shoot and then, like, are unaffected by the fact that, like, your ears are ringing. Like, there's a reason why people yeah. go to the gun range. They wear, like, headphones because yeah. it's, it's very loud. So it's, like, it's yeah. it's odd that they just, like, had that hole in the story. But anyway. Yeah. <sighs> Um, so we see that Snake runs out um, of the bathroom eventually, and then he runs to get Radich, and he's kind of struggling to get out the words of what happened. And then we see that, um, you know, Radich is like, calls the secretary, like, call the police. The um, makeup was and- also, sorry, the makeup, the Snake's makeup was really good. Oh. They made him like, the makeup department. they made him very like ashen and kind of sweaty. Oh. And I was like, that's actually, this, they, they, that they, it's good that it's they remembered touches. that detail of like, yeah, he looks like the color is not, he's not much color in his face. If you go back to the episode, he looks paler, like in a kind of like oh. a grayish, like he looks like someone who just saw something really bad. And I'm like, good for makeup for, for, for thinking yes. about that. Very Shout good. Out. Yeah. Um, but then we kind of see that like, it's so they, they're, we don't see what, we don't see the washroom anymore, um, but the bell rings and we realize it's the end of class and all the students start walking through um, the hallways. And um, so after the bell rings, we see that uh, they're finishing up the end of auditions and everyone's kind of walking around the school. Um, and I heard in the in the distance, like the sign of police sirens. Yes. Um, I like thought it was in the distance. I thought it was coming from outside when I first watched it. Right. I was like, is that from yes. the show or is that from outside? Um, and we see Caitlin's audition. She's doing a, a some sort of sh- like ragtime. Like she's doing like the Charleston. Dance. I was like, why is Caitlin? <laughs> Caitlin was like, since my parents decided to get back together, I decided to do more things like the Charleston. Which was so confusing. The Muppet song. Sorry. I mean, it it fits. It fits. But then I was like, okay, so Caitlin didn't. She 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 was planning to perform the Charleston while wearing her like like aerobics gear. That's her, like, see, but that's her like that's her her, her dance clothes like for like war- for rehearsal. See when she performs, she's gonna give you full, full uh, you know, whatever flapper, um, the Great Gatsby or whatever. Yeah, she's gonna give you full Gatsby. <laughs> um, so we see students walking through the hallway, and then we see that there's some police tape up that's blocking the bathroom, and people are kind of complaining about how they have to walk so far to go to the bathroom. Um, and I wrote down, they are continuing with fucking classes. They didn't evacuate the fucking building. What yeah, the fuck? my first thought, I feel like this, in a school, if this happened, they would suspend the bell. Because it's happened before. Not Come in my, on. not, no one, you know, died. Like, not necessarily like a, a lockdown procedure. But I feel like yeah. if they knew that happened, the police were coming, they would keep the students in class. It'd be like, yes. They were like, we're, they would, probably send a message out to the teachers to be like this is what's happening we're keeping them in and then to be able to to remove the body because then like how are they because because like okay if the the, the police tape is outside of the bathroom the cops are standing there someone walking down the hall is like i saw they have a stretcher but there's students in the hallway so do you guys go and bring a body out while the kids are outside like like Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I was very shocked by that. And I was like, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah, like, why are they still um, so- going to different classes? They would be <laughs> stay in the current class and stay there until they handle everything. Yeah. And then class yeah. school would be shut down early and then it would go home. Like, that's how it would happen, I feel. But I guess not. Exactly. Not in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not in Canada. School matters. Um, <laughs> so we see that they, you know, they go to the next class and that's when the teacher also teachers are very serious and they're like, okay, um, everyone sit down. I've, you know, I have some bad news. And that's when they announced all, you know, there's several different scenes of teachers announcing the same news to, to different classes of students. Um, and they're like, you know, a student has, I don't know, a student has died. I don't know if they like, let them know that it's like oh they I let think them they know it's, they let died. them know it's a suicide because I think they like I okay. think one teacher's just like a student has died I think Wallfish is like 
that it they I think Walfish and Radich both say, or one of them at least says that they believe that it was a suicide. Okay. So they yes. know they know it's they know it's a suicide because that's the that launches them into the conversation about suicide and stuff. Right. Okay. So um then we kind of get the scene where Caitlin finally receives the news and she's very shocked next to Maya. Mm-hmm. Um, because literally, like, you know, it's all clicks in their brains, like, oh, fuck, like, you know, like, the the kind of scenes earlier that day are playing in their minds for sure. Yeah. And we get possibly one of the biggest assholes in Degrassi High history. I just wrote unibrow. Oh, yeah, in Radich's class. Yeah. Oh, my God. So unibrow, he doesn't even deserve me to give him his name. Um, Does he even have he, a name? The, I feel like we've been calling him Unibrow this whole time. I think he has a name because I've seen, because I remember recently someone on Instagram posted like a recent photo of him mm-hmm. and he's a very attractive male. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the actor. But the character he's playing, he was a fucking asshole. Oh, yeah. Um, and he goes, lots of people have problems. They don't kill themselves. Did you Literally know? The, yeah. The hours. The, jo- the it, hour that... <laughs> That happened. It also in the class that Joanne is in, because she's like, Joanne, he's like, Claude had divorced, pa- his parents were divorcing, his dad hated him. She's telling him about yeah. Claude, and he's just like, but did you notice that when he says that, Dwayne and Joey share, like, a look? Yep. And I was like, oh. They sure did. Because, <gasps> like, when, the last time that they interacted, uh, Dwayne was like, maybe I'll just kill myself. Yeah. Yeah, Dwayne had been talking about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it was a nice touch for them to acknowledge that. It was nice. You know, someone in the, you know, that other people in this class yeah. have, have, have dealt with the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like, you never know, like, you can't, that's, the, you know, these kind of blanket statements that are like completely inconsiderate asshole statements. You never know who is, you assume that people are like, like you and like, don't have any problems, like wouldn't kill themselves and never contemplated it. It's like, you don't fucking know. Yeah, you don't know. People, everyone deals with things very differently. And also, you may yeah. not feel that way now, but you never know what's going to happen in your own life that might push you to that point. Exactly. So, <sighs> yeah. So we get we get a kind of jump jump from class to class where we get a lot of all the different students kind of discussing it, and they get the hot questions where it's like the differing opinions of how they think about it. Which the questions they have loves. to ask. Degrassi loves that. Oh, they love. They love it. it. They fucking love it. Uh, which I thought was cool. Like it again, where it's like, um, you know. Different people voicing different opinions about it and, you know, how they feel. Um, and that's when they realize that they're going home early. And I was like, okay, good. Can we, can we talk <laughs> about some of the opinions, though? Oh, yes. Because um, – so this is in the first teacher's class. She's a, a black woman. I don't know who her name is. But she's, like, the first right. teacher who um, – and it's a class with Lucy and them. And Lucy's like – Lucy says – she says something to Alexa, and Alexa's like, Lucy, and then the teacher's like, Lucy, do you want to share the class? And Lucy's like, I think he did it here so we could feel bad about it. And and honestly, <laughs> I agree. Like, everyone's reaction <laughs> is very like, Lucy, that's so cruel. But I was like, but Lucy's not wrong. The, the, the thing is, is that the way that Claude specifically is behaving, he wants – he did this at school because he it's symbolic. He wants – he did. Yeah. He walked out of the yeah. audition saying, you'll see. Like, he's very much like, I feel like, you know, doing this not just to hurt people. Obviously, he's very troubled and he's hurting himself. But he was trying to hurt them. Like a revenge. It was kind, kind of, of a revenge thing in a way. And she's not incorrect. Um, and like. Her delivery was not great. It wasn't great. But it was Lucy. <laughs> Lucy just kind of says things. And it wasn't a great <laughs> delivery. She was like, yeah, I think he wanted to make us feel bad. Like literally within within <laughs> seconds of them hearing about his death, she's like, "Fuck him! He wants to feel bad." <laughs> it's like <Exactly>. Lucy, <laughs> and like Spike jumps in, and she's like, she piggybacks, and she's like, mm-hmm. "It's really selfish of him," like you know, kind of doing the whole like thing. Which I'm like, "No, Spike, it's it's complicated." But they're they're teenagers. Yeah. Then exactly. there's Black Girl. We've like never we've seen her, but she's <laughs> never spoken, and she's like. He's gonna go to hell. He's gonna go to hell. <laughs> like the way she says it. <laughs> 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 
Which again, oh like gosh. reflecting an opinion <laughs> certain people do have about suicide, but like the way she says it is just like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, well. <laughs> Also, I thought it was so funny, like, as the scene was closing, you see later the camera pans her, she's, like, hysterically she's crying. crying. And I was like... <laughs> like, bitch, you say you're going to hell. There's always that crying? one person that's, like, that, like, just... I mean, I think there's levels of, like, empathy. Like, they're either an empath or, like, oh, I want attention for being the saddest. <laughs> like, it, was, it was weird. <laughs> and I don't know if she was crying because of his his damned soul. So she's crying because, like, he's going to hell. I, I don't know what it was. But it just was, like, a weird outburst from someone we've never heard from before. And then she starts crying. <laughs> 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 Unintentionally funny because it is so, like, okay. Like, whoa. I know. It's like, who come, are you again? Coming in hot random girl like <laughs> it's like a full like mean girls moment when like someone in the back is like she doesn't even go here it's it like, was very bad it was like who are you <laughs> she's like i just I, I saw some people walking in and you know having heartfelt moment i wanted to join is that too much to ask <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah yeah and school closes early though and they go and guidance yeah. counselors are available yeah and there'll be trained professionals and apparently a trauma team which i was like Snaps for that. Look at this. Yeah. Love um, that. Uh, so we see that after school, students are leaving. Um, Caitlin and Maya are discussing kind of like, obviously, Maya's like, I don't know what the fuck to say. And Caitlin's like, kind of not really, she's not showing a lot of emotion yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they're basically talking about like, if she had anything to do with it, was she the reason that he, you know, did everything? Um and that's when Joey's kind of asking where Snake is. Um, and then we're kind of getting jumping around. And then we see that Lucy and um, Bruno um, Bronco. are Bronco. <laughs> I was like, I, there were so many possibilities running through my vein. I was like, oh, finally, I got it. Bruno. Bronco. <laughs> um, <laughs> Bronco and Lucy. Um, they're kind of wondering, like, oh my gosh. So it's basically, uh, like, you know, are they wondering, like, was it was it us? Like, was was it kind of the thing, like, we didn't let him read his poem, and then it kind of threw him off the edge? Um, oh, sorry, it, I, I referred to it earlier wrong. It's not a poem, it's a monologue that he was giving. Oh. Yeah, it was a okay. monologue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Th- thanks for your poem. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> we get to Caitlin's house. And this, okay, listen, was there no phone call home to alert the parents that there was a student that killed himself at school? Because, yeah, Caitlin, she walks in the door and her mom is sprinting out the door to go help her dad with his broken down car. Yeah, and I was her like, philandering husband. She's like, oh, your father, his, his car broke down. No. There's a woman in it with him. It's like cheating on her. You're right. She's like, <laughs> I will never trust him again. Um, but so it's obvious. Then we kind of, so her mom says, Oh, when did you get a new boyfriend? It's obvious that she doesn't know about what happened at school that day. And we see that, um, Caitlin got some flowers sent to the house and we see that Claude sent her a bouquet of what, Sonique? White roses. Oh, Gosh. So, like, so, so uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. Fucking uncomfortable. And he left a note, too, for her. A fucking, like, it's like a suicide note. It's a suicide note, but also the line that kills me is that he says, I forgive you for how you treated me. Which is like, oh my fucking God. And I hate to say it, but dick move. Like, that, like what the hell? Like, it's the it's manipulative and, and abusive because you did this to her. The thing is, you're not – the issue isn't that he left her a note because suicide notes exist. It's not It's not a problem. Yeah. People leave notes all the time. But the problem is that it's very clear, like, I am kind of blaming you for this. It, it's fucked yes. up. Especially when it's like, okay, how she treated him. Okay, so you guys got a so – you guys broke into a facility – you left her there to get arrested. So she's mad at you. So now she's now her yeah. situation's fucked up because her parents are pissed. She's going to court. She dry, just justifiably breaks up with you and is mad at you. And it's like, no, bro, like, what the hell? 
after that happens, yeah. you continue to pursue her. She tells you to leave her alone. She does hit them at him that one time, but it was an accident. She's trying to tell him to go, and she accidentally yes. hits him. But you continuously try to get her to talk to you and get back with her, and she does not want to talk to you. And then that cherry on the top is that you then complete suicide and then leave a note saying, I forgive you for how you treated me this whole time. That's so that's so fucked up and manipulative. And he, like, made the plan ahead of time to, like, have the flowers sent to her house to know that she would find them. After I done After it. she knew. Exactly. So oh that, that way, God. the last thing you get is this note, and now you have to just sit in, the, in this, these feelings, and I'm gone. That's – it's mess it's, – it's, it's abusive, and, like, Degrassi doesn't let him get away with it because the conversation with Joey later, they do, like, touch on yeah, that and that it's it, wrong. Yeah. But I feel like it's – but not enough. I feel like, no, this is really, no. like, gross. Like, that's... It's so gross. It's messed up. It's abusive. I know. And this is, like, when it's like, wait, are you, like, are you, like, making him into a villain? <laughs> like, yeah. You could have just had him, like, you could have just had an end at him in the bathroom. You didn't have to do all this other stuff to make him even, like, to make him a villain. Like, you didn't have to do that. Yeah. Because the way, and, 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 and again, I don't yeah. know if it's like an age thing where like they just didn't know any better in the early 90s. Because I think if this show was made, the same episodes made today, it would be very, it would have a very different tone. It wouldn't just be like, this wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the episode about suicide where we're trying to tell kids, hey, call someone. It would be written as like her abusive boyfriend did this to hurt her. It would be a very different storyline. Yes. And like, exactly. But it's not necessarily. It isn't. It isn't in this version, and it's confusing. You don't know. It's like it's like. Are we supposed to feel bad about how bad his life was? Because again, we don't know how fucking we don't bad his know. life was. Yeah, outside of what people tell us that that's what's I happening, know. we don't see. We don't see it, so I don't know what's really going on. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Gross. Oof. But just like so gross, and it's like, oh shit! Like this is gonna fuck her up. Like that's not great. Which is what he wanted. Um. Yes, and it's like, oh, God, no. That was a calculated move, yeah. Very calculated. So we see, I think it's probably the next day, they're in the auditorium with Mr. Radich, and they're having kind of like a, (laughs) some sort of like town hall meeting debate, um, deciding whether or not they're going to have the talent show Mm -hmm. um, with the recent events. Um, (laughs) I love how, like, um, at some point, like, they're kind of, someone says something, or I don't know if anyone says something, but, like, Radish is obviously just there to supervise, because he's not going to lead any of the conversation. No. He's like, maybe someone else should say something. Like, maybe an adult. Like, you're I, the adult. I was like, an adult should be, like, actually <laughs> yes. leading this conversation. And honestly, I would say the adult should be having it with the teachers and the staff. I don't know if this uh-huh. is a conversation the kids should be deciding, yeah. but okay. Um, But... Uh, finally, they kind of go back and forth, and then we see that Spike suggests that maybe we could turn the talent show into a benefit yeah. for the family. But don't forget, Joanne um, has her, like a very dramatic exit because she's like, oh. she's like, hey, she's the one who outright is like, let's not do this because this is fucked up because like someone died, and I think we shouldn't be having this silly show. And Lucy, Lucy doesn't give a fuck. Joe. Lucy's like outright just like debating her. I'm like, Lucy, this isn't the time. Like. I- <laughs> I love Lucy, but I think Lucy's going a little bit too hard to be, like, debating. Like, yeah, Claude hurt a lot of people, too. So maybe we should, like, she's just <laughs> being kind of shitty. Sucks. And, um, you know, yeah. she Lucy's stance is like, oh, okay, life should go, life needs to go on. But also, like, yeah, Joanne's, Joanne's going through it. Let's be a little sensitive. But she's, like, basically, mm. like, fuck y'all and leaves with her jorts. Exactly. Um... Uh, I wrote down that at some point, Caitlin is, um, so Caitlin is referring to Claude. I don't know who she's talking to at this point. I think she's talking but, to Maya because I feel like that's the only person she talks to anymore. Right, right. <laughs> don't ever see um, talk to anybody else but Maya. <laughs> yeah. So Caitlin, is, they're talking about, you know, what everything that happened. And this is, so before, you know, before Caitlin gets the flowers, she's kind of indifferent. She's not really sure how she's feeling but like the next day after the flower she's like fuck Claude um he's a creep and I'm not going to some she said something like something she refers to, like a suicide person she or, like, said she said I would never go to a suicide's funeral it's, po- it's stupid and I was like oh Ooh. Ooh. yeah yeah that's gross not so okay I think Maya was like oh oh okay 
All right. Yeah, she takes on a very, like, understandably, like, she's angry, but she does take on these very blanket statements of, like, like, suicides are stupid. Like, it's like a girl, I don't know, but that's the, that's the, um, the messaging we want to go with right now, but okay. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so we get to science class. Joey's asking again the teacher about science class because I think they're having a test or something coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, and Caitlin goes to the back of the classroom. She's trying to get something out of those. Every science class has those like old ass cabinets with the glass windows. Yeah. <laughs> with like with the ba- glassware and stuff and- in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so she's going to go get something back there. She looks at her reflection in the mirror and she thinks that she sees Claude like behind her um and the reflection and so that's where we're kind of seeing like oh she's starting to have like the you know it's it's starting to affect her in a different way now right Mm -hmm. um so kind of throws caitlin off and she's still in a bad mood of course and this is when the teacher suggests that caitlin can tutor joey um with the science because the teacher's too busy um he's like i don't want to do that how about you caitlin (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, he's like i don't want to do my job <laughs> yeah. hey, he's, hey child why don't you do it for me yeah <laughs> um so caitlin kind of like uh you know begrudgingly just kind of like okay yeah fine um and but the, ironically this is like actually when caitlin is being an ice queen wait what I said, ironically, this is actually a time that Caitlyn is kind of coming across as an ice queen. Yeah, she's being kind of, like, like <laughs> mean. But, like, I, I get it. Ooh. But, yeah, it's, like, justified. Is this the point when we also find out that Wheel when Wheels comes into the, sh- into the sh- picture? Or is this later? Yes. So, this is, uh, so, after class, I think Wheel sees Joey. Oh, okay. Um to give him the money. Sorry, my notes are very disorganized, so I just see, like, wheels. And I'm like, what? Is he here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's also in the reflection with clothes. Um, <laughs> very creepy. Um, so we see that Wheels uh, sees Joe in the hall to give him the money to pay back his mom yeah. um, that he made back with, that he stole. Um, and they're kind of, like, reconnecting. It's like, okay, we can, you know, we're we're back to kind of being friends again. Yeah. Um, and he's pumping and gas now. We find out that he has a job. Look at that. I mean, he has a mullet. So it's him. like, yeah, he should be pumping gas. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 part of the aesthetic. He has like the full denim outfit. Like, yeah, he oh, looks yes. like that's what Some his... coveralls? Yeah, he would love it. But also, um, yeah. so I was confused that before because I was like, does anyone know that Snake is the one who found out? But it I seems think Joey's like Joey's probably the only one. Yeah, I was confused. I was like, "Did does Joey know?" Because at one point, I guess Joey was looking for him earlier in the episode, mm-hmm. and I guess he knows. And because then um, Wheels is like, "Is it true that?" Because there's a rumor now, like that Snake is the yeah. one who found Claude, and it's like, "Yeah," and it's like, and Wheels just wants to call Snake, and I'm like, "Oh, Wheels is he's mm. trying. He's trying to be better, a better person. He is good for him." It's very, it's very sweet, like how they're like, you know. Coming the together. nostalgia of the three of them is coming back, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we see that. Um, uh, uh, so we get we show a clip of um, Snake is outside on his porch, like fixing a bike or something, or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> doing some sort of hand work. Yeah. Um, and he's sitting outside, and Joey comes up, and you know they're like, "Hey, man!" Um, and like Snake is like. At first, I didn't know what he was gonna like, what he was gonna come across as, and it's like he's obviously like he's just there, like he's he's not like like you know slumped over, like looking up, looking down at the ground, you know. But like he's obviously not like the interaction between him and Joe is not completely back to normal, like and, yeah. and Snake's normal self, you know, self. Um, and Joey asks when he's coming back to school. Um, Snake is coming back to school. Uh, and that's when we find out he's seeing a therapist, which I was like, "Thank goodness!" Yes, thank God. Yeah, because like he clearly has PTSD because he's oh, like yeah. talking about how like he found uh, Claude and how he looked and how he feels guilty because he's like, "What if I had gotten there sooner? I could have stopped it." Like you know, he's. I mean, the poor it, poor guy, and it's like it's 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 almost like Lucy's point earlier, like. 
in a way, again, I agree with Lucy, but then also her delivery is just it it has much to left much is left like to desire or whatever yeah. the saying is. But like um because there is that like act of like, okay, so you decided to he decided to um kill himself in a very public way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, someone had to find him. And Snake is exactly. like, I didn't even know this guy. Like I now I have to carry this this weight. Um, and this trauma, and I didn't like. I didn't do anything. Like I didn't know him. Like I didn't, you know. It, mm. It's it's sad, and I understand his feelings. Um, I've read before on. Um, there's this website called TVTropes.org, and it is like Ooh. a a website that like compiles all of the tropes ever made in TV and movies. <laughs> it's like it's, it's psychotic. Like I don't even know why I read it. Sometimes I spend hours. Like I'll just pick <laughs> a movie and I'll just read all of them, and it's like people who you know, uh, people. Uh, users of the website who like contribute to it and i read Mm -hmm. it and there's i've read degrassi's before and there is a section there's this one section called fridge horror and fridge horror is basically like the the realization you have like later after watching something of like the fucked up implications of the thing and one of the Mm -hmm. entries under fridge horror is snake archie snake simpson and the fact that Snake has seen a lot of really fucked up things in his life. Who is his therapist? Because you consider that he's he found Claude. And then mm-hmm. later on he becomes a teacher to Grassy. Where all that There's awful a shit happens. A lot of trauma. Students die. Um spoiler, JT York gets murdered after a party that happened at his house where he lived. <sighs> I forgot about Snake that. is Snake has gone through and has seen an innumerable amount of like shit. And it's like, is he in therapy long term? Like if if this character was a real person, because he's been through some shit. And I was like, damn, I never yeah. thought about that. And it all starts here. True. Shit. And um, he has a gay older brother, and he's contemplating his own sexuality. Snake's I mean, got a lot like, going damn. on. Snake needs his own movie. Damn, we're putting we're putting that out there. We would like um, Degrassi production to um, come with the up to date like today. We would like a snake. Like, however old? How do you think? How old do you think they are now? They're like in their forties. Okay, probably like, um, early fifties, maybe. Yeah, late forties, early fifties. Yeah. I would like that. I would watch that. I would pay money for that. Yeah, I would stream that. Yeah. Um. So they're kind of, you know, we see that Snake is, you know, kind of just kind of having like a mental kind of flashback and is kind of talking about what it was like in that moment um, and kind of just refeeling everything. Mm. Um. But then he eventually kind of like finishes it and then they eventually start <laughs> laughing and joking again, which is very like... <laughs> I don't know. I feel like in that kind of uh, like grieving time with like being around friends or family, I think that's good though. Yeah, so, it's really good. You can see it's like he's going through a lot, but it's like he's gonna he's gonna be okay. Yeah. Or is he? We don't know because we need the up- updated version of Snake. Thank you. We need a um, Snake the Saga continues. <laughs> so. Uh, we see that we get to Caitlin's house and we see that she's having a nightmare mm-hmm. about um, Claude, kind of like a flashback of his monologue and, you know, just a a, a, a nightmare. It's really um, scary because then like he like he's scary. like chasing her and she's trying to run in like in that dream way where you can't run fast enough. She's like running in place and he's just like slowly like approaching her with the rose. It was scary. <laughs> Very scary. Yeah. Um, so we get to the next day at school, uh, we find out that all, in an announcement, all the proceeds for the benefits will go to a suicide prevention organization, Mm -hmm. or like non-profit type thing. Um, we see that Joey and Caitlin are making plans for tutoring, but we, we see that Caitlin's being very distant and like, being like, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. You know, um, not really present in any kind of interactions. Mm Mm-hmm. And Joey's kind of reading into it a bit. Um, uh, 
Oh, because so Caitlin's kind of being distant because they're trying to make plans for tutoring. I think Caitlin is like, oh, you can just come over to my house later. We can, I, I can tutor you there. Yeah. Um, that's what they make plans for. And Joey's kind of like reading into it. He's like, oh, I'm going over to her house. Okay. Which is like hilarious. And like Joey, like her ex just died. Like, <laughs> I like Joey seems very like unaware of like why Caitlyn is so like unaware. obviously he finds out why she is acting the way she is but I feel like it should be very obvious like Claude was her ex-boyfriend <laughs> like yeah I think that's why she's feeling this way or if anything I'd be like hey if you can't like I know it's, like, it's been a weird week I'd be like if you can't tutor me it's fine I'll find someone else like I feel like that's yeah. the most obvious thing but not for Joey I guess <laughs> no um so uh, we get to Caitlin going to her locker. She's kind of cleaning it out or she's trying to find something in it. And that's when she sees that there is an earring at the bottom of her locker. And we get a flashback of like early, maybe season one, mm-hmm. um, when he, Claude, gives Caitlin um, one of his earrings that's never been worn before. Mm-hmm. Um, and he gave it to her when they were dating. Yes. Um and you know just kind of another moment of like her just kind of having like a self-realization of like oh fuck what did i do what's happened like you know yeah just another thing added right um so we get to the big scene that's at caitlin's house yes um first thing is is was caitlin's house always painted pink on the inside or is that new you know i don't remember i was kind of shocked by the color i wasn't I wasn't used to seeing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we see that Caitlin's being very cold towards Joey and just like very irritated um, and very short with him uh, when tutoring. And <laughs> Joey, again, does not read the room. Nope. Or pick up on any social cues. And he decides to make a joke. Um, and Caitlin's like, fuck this shit. I've had it. And they start arguing, um, you know, over the tutoring situation. Mm-hmm. And this kind of added to like the 90s factor or a 90s score for me, which she calls him a, a numb skull. Yeah. Or numb, numb brain. Yeah. Or numb, you know, but I was like, oh my, oh my gosh, I haven't heard that in so long. But like a numb skull. I haven't heard yeah, someone say that in a long like, time. I know. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> finally, Joey's like, well, tell me why are you being so serious it's like really right joy? thank you it's it's so <laughs> weird he says that and i'm like her ex just died like he's acting like he doesn't know why like that caitlin was close to claude even though it's like yeah. that's why you guys broke up why are you acting like i don't like i feel like this is the, the writers <laughs> failing because it's like joey yeah, would joey's like maybe not the most sensitive guy in the world but joey would know like that yeah he could put two and two together yeah he's not that dumb like <laughs> yeah because then they start like talking about it like but she just she keeps wanting to change the subject but then she keeps also bringing it up yeah so it's a very clear like she wants to yeah. talk but like you know it's tricky but then also joey's being stupid because he keeps asking like really <laughs> insensitive questions he's like can you imagine like taking a gun and shooting yourself it's like joey come on <laughs> like this happened like yesterday or like two days ago like it's so fresh I know it's like I think Joey was like, "Oh, I can't talk about this with the snake. Let me find someone to chat about with this. Uh, let's talk with Claude's ex. Yes, <laughs> no, Joey. I'm like, call no. Wheels or something. Go talk to someone who's a little bit <sighs> more removed from the situation. He's just like, oh can geez. you imagine if you were the one? It's like, can you stop? <laughs> <laughs> He's so stupid. Um, so. Caitlin's on the verge of talking about the letter that Claude left with her, left for her and the flowers. And then Joey eventually gets it out of her. Like, you know, like, what's going on? Like, I feel like you're being weird. And that's <laughs> I when... feel like you're being weird. <laughs> you your ex just killed himself. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like something's up with you. Did you get a haircut? Like, what's up? <laughs> hey, you guys changed the color of your walls. You get pink? Interesting. <laughs> that's different. Joey's actually me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This episode is so unintentionally okay. funny sometimes. I know. I know. They <laughs> they drop the ball. Did it. They drop the ball sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 
Um, Joey eventually gets it out of her and she's like, he said goodbye to me. And that's when she tells him about the flowers that she got and the note. Mm -hmm. Um, and Joey. So she's, it's kind of this back and forth of like, Caitlin's like, you know, feeling guilty or feeling like something. And then Joey's like, will console her some way about like, you know, like, um, like being like, no, like, you know, like what he did. Let's see. Um, oh, so Joey's talking about how he, he, meaning Claude, wanted her to feel guilty and make everyone hurt. Um, and then at some point he says, he was a pig. Don't even give, (laughs) which I'm like, okay. Again, like, can we villainize Claude anymore? Please. Right. (laughs) And it's like, okay, what are we, like, what are we trying to say with this episode? That's the (laughs) issue here. Cause it's like, you're trying, you, this is the, this is the suicide episode like everyone knows this is the suicide episode and watching it now and i I haven't watched in years so i didn't really remember yeah what like i knew claude kills himself i didn't like really remember like all the details of it but looking back it's like what are you trying to say because i feel like with the way these shows work the the reality is that like how the the last declarative statement is what the show is saying right if if you're not Mm -hmm. If you're not pushing back on the argument, then the implication is this is what you're trying to say with this show. So when you have the final climax of an argument, which is like the emotional moment in the show when like usually is when the, the character who's going through like the, the trauma or turmoil is kind of like they go through this emotional thing, but then they kind of have a resolution. That's how like Degrassi always uh-huh. pretty much plays out. It's really weird that in the same episode where you're trying to be like suicide's not the answer. You should listen to your friends when they're going through having issues. And the last thing being like, he was a pig. He wanted us to feel bad. <laughs> it's, what? it's like, wait. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what am I supposed to think about this exactly? And it, it's it, uh, and the thing is, it's true. What what Cole yeah. did was wrong. We've made that very clear. Exactly. But because it's the only time you decide to talk about suicide, it feels like you're saying <laughs> suicide people who commit suicide are bad because they want to hurt you through their suit it's it's really yeah. it's really weird what's happening yeah. here i felt like the what they what they were doing i feel like which kind of also time stamped it in the sense of like they were like okay our strategy with this is like we're gonna villainize him so badly and see like so like basically kind of give you which i think was what kind of 13 reasons was trying to do maybe in some way i don't know i feel like there's a lot of parallels with the 13 reasons why in this episode oh yeah big um, time that you know they were trying to villainize him so bad and see how badly people talked about him and like after death that like would basically like, discourage people from being like well i don't want that to happen after like <laughs> It's like somehow my life got worse after I died. Like all these people hated me. Maybe I shouldn't like attempt suicide. Like I feel like that was their goal. And it's like, it's a weird um, implication. No. And like, even if that yeah. wasn't their goal, it feels like you're trying to be like, see, if you kill yourself, everyone will talk badly about you. They'll still hate you. You think everyone hates you now. They'll hate you even more after you do it. It's like, wait, yeah. what? <laughs> It's like so. Instead of being like, look at all these people that are gonna miss you. Like it's like, look how much how many people are gonna suffer if you die. Like think about like that could be you know a way of convincing someone to you know think yeah, differently I th- about I think that's a, I th- how that's their a, death can impact. That's people. a great I think message because it is the like yeah the impact because like because it, it's like you know when you when someone does um, complete suicide there there are people left behind who are left with these emotions of mm-hmm. guilt anger sadness all of these all of these things like are real but like and i think that's great that they were doing that it to show the range of emotions right but then when you end with (laughs) (laughs) the guy was a pig in the episode the one episode where you decide to make it your special suicide episode it's really messed up like it's one thing if so this was up. tandled after another suicide episode where we already touch on these issues and this was just a unique scenario, yeah. but that's not what happened. No. And that's how you it's, end with you know the episode doesn't end there, but the episode the, the right. episode the emotional like core for Caitlin ends on Joey being like, "Hey, if you feel guilty, you're going to give that creep what he wanted." It's like, "Whoa." <laughs> 
Whoa. <laughs> like, again, it's that, it's that stuff like rapist where we're supposed to hate, like, where it's like, hey, don't, like, don't blame yourself for this. Like, don't let your emotions get that way. Like, again, it's like, what he did was wrong. Claude did was wrong. But, like, that's... This is not the episode of being like, don't be a fucking asshole and commit suicide. Like, don't, like, that's well, not. But also, it's, it's like, what, the, the, the thing is, the wrong that Claude did was, because if we're talking about gro- right and wrong, it's a moral question versus yeah. right and wrong of like, well, actually, no, I wouldn't even look at suicide as being a right and wrong, right? Because like, suicide is right. just kind of, it's, I feel like it was, it's best not to put like a moral stance on it. It right. just is an exactly. unfortunate tragedy. The right and wrong yes. that Claude did wasn't the suicide, it was the leaving a note for Caitlin and kind of implying to her that you caused this, which is yeah, that's a wrong. manipulation. Suicide is a separate thing of like, this is someone who's hurting. Degrassi yes. did the thing where they took both of them and decided to kind of use them almost interchangeably. That's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you should have just yeah. done suicide and just left it there and leave out mm-hmm. all of this weird f- f- love note thing and the rose <laughs> and the i won't be going to any other classes you'll all see it's like okay whoa it's <laughs> oh god degrassi degrass yes <laughs> degrass is oh degrass yeah um but you know we have a little bit of a close-up cute moment because oh not this isn't cute sorry <laughs> so they hug <laughs> they hug and and, you know, Caitlin's just crying into Joey's shoulder. It's like, oh, he's there for her. This this moment here when he's there for her could be like a, like a, a changing tide for them. And it's like, oh, my God. What the fuck, Degrassi? <laughs> uh. Honestly, they should have made, they should have just continued the storyline with Dwayne. And like, ma- like either made the choice to have him attempt suicide or complete suicide, that that would have been, like, that would have made sense for a suicide episode. Yes, because at least we have gotten, like, that's actually a great point. And I hope, I wish that with Dwayne, actually, he wouldn't complete it, because I don't want, like, you know, yeah. the one person you, you who You want has, the light at, yeah. Yeah, light at the end of the tunnel. But that's actually a great, that's perfect. Because even though we kind of did get a button on Dwayne, because, like, he has been talking to Joey. He has talked about wanting to, but then, like, it seems like he's not planning mm-hmm. to do it. It makes total sense, at least because we, we got a full two-part episode with Dwayne about his struggles yeah. with HIV. It would make sense if he does go through it and we can empathize with this person. And also, it's it's more of an internal struggle more than, like, I'm trying to prove a point to the sheep yeah. what they did to me. You know? It, it's And I think it would have been perfect because we would have – I think – there's more empathy in that but like this one yeah. it's just they did they listen i'm i would not put it past the grassy storyline wise i don't I, I i think they had good intentions of like they wanting did. to kill, where, bring away and the, and the but funny like, thing like, is we can this episode yeah. will probably will score very high on our ranking system simply because it did go there it is very 90s it, it's 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 highest ranked in terms of the degrassi of it all yes but like it's not good the messaging of it all this is this is not the well actually i was thinking i was like this is not the episode you want to show in your class teaching them about suicide but according to the youtube comment section this is an episode that they showed at many schools to teach them about F suicide oh no uh-uh <laughs> no it I should not like a like a cut version that excluded like the love thing the love ending i wish they had i wish they had an edited version to like only talk about the hard-hitting things instead of like yeah. ah fuck look at caitlin getting scorned by another man at least joey's there to bring her up it's like no yeah <laughs> you're you're fully right yeah i'm sorry for i'm sorry for the students who had to watch this in their class because this, this ain't it this ain't it no <sighs> yeah um so our final scene is the showtime show or the talent show sorry um and uh we get the uh jock what they call jockets are getting ready um and people are just kind of fighting their seats and they're getting ready to begin the show right and we see nancy kathleen maybe and lucy scrambling to their seats before the show starts did you see lucy's outfit for the talent show i did I did. That's. I think that's Iconic. what I said. Her ponytail is bouncy. 
her ponytail is bouncy. She's wearing this black pencil skirt with this flowy shoulder pad, like bright orange, but not like neon, like silk flowy blouse. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bitch, get out of here. Well, J- How Lucy dare said, you steal Lucy a benefit said, show for it for us? Lucy <laughs> for said so life needs. She said life needs to go on, bitches. Y'all catch this outfit. She don't give a fuck. <laughs> that's why she felt so badly about. Uh, that's why she's so passionate about. She's like, listen, you didn't see my outfit that I was supposed to be wearing this weekend to the town show. You're gonna ruin. You're gonna ruin my moment. Come on. Basically, she's like, um, if we cancel the town show, then no one can see catch this fit. So y'all gonna have y'all gonna have to fuck up, Joanne. I don't know what you going through. You have to fucking figure it out, honey, because I'm wearing this shit. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, speaking of Joanne, Lucy, listen, Joanne's going through a lot, but she could have she she could have worn a better dress. She looks like a forty year old woman in this dress. She does. She gets up there. So we we start the talent show. And they introduce Joanne, who's going to say some things on behalf of the family. And Joanne is wearing, what is that material called where it's like, I remember having a dress of this material, like with a poofy skirt. It's like this weird, shiny, um, like crinkly, almost fabric that is not soft. Um, It's usually what's made, like used to make like a poofy skirt or like shoulder pads. Is it like... Oh, um, I know what you mean. I don't know what it's called, but I know what you mean. It's because it's very, that, it's very ninety. It's very like it was very popular. Yes. I'm pretty sure I also had like a church dress that was made yes. out of it. It's there's nothing comfortable or soft it's about really this material. It's really itchy and like it's, uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes. And you sweat um, a lot because entire... it's like, I think it's like it's synthetic. Yes. So like you're hot too. Yes. It's just, it, you don't have to know the type of fabric. It's like, it's just synthetic. Like, whatever the fabric is, it's, it's and all the synthetics in one. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's wearing like a, like, and there's like a, like a white flower, like, brooch thing on her chest. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, dear. But, you know, she's going through a lot. <clears throat> but um, <laughs> she, she's basically talking about the program where all the money is going to be going to. And how it can help. It didn't. It couldn't help Claude, but it's. It can help others that are thinking this way, um, and realize that there's, you know, suicide's not the answer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought I gave her. I gave her props for her acting. You yeah. can see her ear, her eyes welling up. She was doing a very good job. She was actress. crying. She was. That was like those oh, are real yeah. tears. She. This girl. Yes. It's a shame too because we don't. We don't. We don't know her. I don't know her no. because she does well throughout the episode. Her acting is quite well. good. But can we talk about how? So she's like, so that's not the answer. She cries and runs off the stage, and the tone changes to like dancing. <laughs> and it's literally the theme song. It is the theme song of like, so that's not the answer. So tonight we've morning. got a great show for you. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, oh, that's tone change. Maybe Joanna's right. We should not have the show. <laughs> oh, or maybe the opening no. number should not have been that. Maybe it's like, she's like, oh, Susan has the answer. Maybe someone does like a lyrical dance or something or like a song. Someone sings right. like a ballad. Like anything. Anything but or like, like a moment of silence. Um, I don't know. Something. Yeah. Um, but we we get a we get a a quick segue roll into the jockets, uh, shit show of a of a like they're not really doing anything, but everyone thinks it's so funny, and that just makes me remember of like high school like teen where you're just like ha, <laughs> you like don't you, I remember like laughing at things, but but like because I was like oh people think it's funny, but it's not. I knew it wasn't funny, but I was like oh people say it's funny, so I laugh. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of. Yeah. Um, it's very low brow. Low, the lowest of brows. So we get a scene, our last scene. It's, you know, um, what is it called when it's on the side of the stage? They're like, a, they're the like curtains. in the wings. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so Joey and Caitlin um, are having a little bit of a moment. 
and um, Caitlin's in her full like flapper gear. Yes, um, she's giving us cabaret. <laughs> she's like, listen, yes, <laughs> Bill Coleman, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so they're kind of having a moment they're being very friendly with each other um they're laughing and being like isn't this so stupid like oh, it just reminded me of like those moments when um i don't know there's moments like around like a performance time mm-hmm. or like something where like the energy is just like different it's it's almost like a dance energy where like anything could happen oh like, yeah on the the dance. yeah you have that like excited it's- energy of like you're kind of nervous, yes. but like you're you're happy, like oh, like this is yes. Ah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna you, go out there, and you're like, ah. yeah. And it's like a mix of stage fright, and then like you're seeing people outside of school, and you're seeing them like perform in something different that usually you don't see them in, and you're like, oh my gosh, they like look cuter than normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like they're like they get they're like dancing on stage in tutus. Well, it's also but, funny because like they're having this heart to heart when the wheels is in the background like practicing because he took up Snake spot because yeah. Snake is obviously like <laughs> having flashbacks somewhere, and wheels just in the background yeah. like short dance like doing this dance <laughs> while they're like trying to talk about like their feelings and like suicide and right. he's like yes. it's just to cry. very high school <laughs> very high school uh, um <laughs> but yes yeah, so he basically she's like he kind of like walks away because he's gonna get ready and then she's like wait joey i just want to thank you for for listening and then she kisses him on the cheek very sensually my my dad <laughs> there was tongue like she the Oh, she like lingered on his cheek, and then she's like oh, lipstick, and like had to rub it off. It's like, girl, you knew, mm-hmm. you knew, you wore your reddest lipstick today on purpose. Oh yes, yes. Um, so that's the end of it, and then we get our closing PSA, um, kind of wrapping it up. And <laughs> my only comment on this PSA at the end was that they made the choice to verbally just say that Claude is just an actor he didn't really die but had the audacity to not bring him on stage to show that he didn't die because if i was a teenager i was like how do i know he didn't die well, also like, are kids watching this show and being like a s-? but you know i guess when i was a little kid and i watched tv i didn't know that people acted death i think i'd assume people died right. like when i was like little little yeah. like five i was like oh like i i just assumed every movie i watched was like a snuff film and it was like yeah i just watched someone get killed like i don't I was stupid. <laughs> but I was like, you could, you guys could have just showed him. And then he could have been like, hey, this was just acting. Like, he could have been the one saying it. Um, I don't, I don't know. I thought that was a choice. Um, but yeah, they gave like, at the, both, I think both at the beginning at the end, I believe they gave, a um, the number for, like the suicide like a hotline. Some version of the suicide hotline, yeah. It wasn't the same one that's at, that exists now, but um yeah. But yeah. And um I don't know, they kind of gave more of the same of like, you know, suicide's not the answer. Um if you're feeling this way, like find an adult to talk to about how you're feeling and you know, the kind of basic riffraff. Yeah. And, and if all else fails, just find someone that can love you. Um like Joey. Yeah, that will that will cure, cure you. 